all right today we'll be learning about azure sentinel one of the important services in terms of azure security so let me give you one line definition of what is azure sentinel sentinel helps us in threat detection investigation and proactive hunting including on premises as well as multi cloud environment using artificial intelligence so without much of theory and will be diving into the hands on let's go to azure sentinel microsoft sentinel but there is a catch uh, for sentinel we need log analytics workspace we'll be knowing this in a while why we need log analytics workspace but uh, for a twister i have just mentioned let's open microsoft sentinel so as soon as we click on sentinel there aren't much option first option is to like create microsoft sentinel let's click on create once we click on create if you look here it's mentioned create a new workspace so let's click on create new workspace so the magic uh, if you look as soon as we click on new workspace we are landed into create log analytics workspace so that was the trick or the twister which i mentioned that a log analytics a workspace we need to create so your question might be why do we need to create log analytics workspace when we are more interested in azure sentinel right so let me explain you log analytics workspace is the fundamental step in onboarding to azure sentinel because log analytics workspace provides data ingestion and storage capabilities allowing us to analyze security data effectively right so i hope that answers your question why you are getting log analytics workspace so let's select one resource group let's uh, name our uh, log analytics workspace so cloud guru amit log analytics looks good we'll directly go to review and create everything looks fine we'll click on the create button in order to create one log analytics workspace all right our deployment succeeded right we need to refresh it once our log analytics workspace appears so here we go log analytics um, amit log space uh, cloud analytics workspace we need to add this let's click on the add button let's click on the okay for the trial to get activated uh, next uh, we need to make one watch list now your question might be why do we need one watch list once again so a watch list defines list of specific entities which we want to monitor for suspicious activity that's why we need one watch list so let's uh, click here now let's click on the new button here we have uh, we can uh, name our watch list let's name it cloud guru amit watch list i'll copy the alias and paste it next is the important part that is the source so we'll browse the watch list from our local uh, computer uh, that is the file is on local computer and uh, we have a sent uh, like uh, the file type please note it should be csv so let's browse it from our local computer or uh, data all right this is our watch list sample watch list which i have on my local computer let's open it as soon as i open i'll be presented out with the uh, preview part of it what's there in my csv so you can create one um, csv file on your computer and upload on your um, upload here as well right so now let's uh, go to review and create all right before moving we need to mention one search key if you notice that there is a star mark and the source is crossed that means i missed something right so let's browse our uh, description isn't relevant for us because we are tracking or will be using ip addresses as the search key let's go to review and create let's click on create button so our watch list seems to be ready if i uh, click here and uh, click on the uh, refresh button if i look here my watch list is uh, ready now so our next step would be to create one threat indicator so where do we get threat indicator threat indicator is under here threat intelligence now your question might be why we are creating one threat indicator right so creating threat indicator in as the sentinel is essential for effective threat detection because as mentioned in the sentinel uh, definition that a sentinel helps in detecting right so threat indicator will help us in threat detection and response so right so let's uh, click on the add new currently if you note there are uh, ti that is threat indicator alerts is zero ti indicators threat indicator indicators is zero right everything is zero we'll be configuring this thing now let's create uh, click on the type because we have presented without uh, with 
certain types so as now let's go back to our local computer so if i open the file on my local computer we will present it out with uh, ip addresses and description right so these belong to the ipv4 so i'll be uh, copying this out uh, and uh, pasting here that is ipv4 address ip address let's uh, put it in the description i have already done my homework i'll uh, just uh, copy and paste this uh, descriptions here right because this will be appearing now uh, there will be important parameters like valid from and valid until so uh, let me move uh, one day and click on apply so currently if you look since i have added one ip address here right so uh, its ti indicator is one and ti source is one similarly uh, the uh, i'll be adding um, the uh, watch list which i have already have here with the ip addresses into here so let's uh, do it everything quickly all right i'm adding the uh, last entry here so we are uh, now uh, done for our uh, like threat intelligence or threat indicator right let me refresh it so that the correct number is reflected here three because we have added three here now uh, let's uh, go to the logs logs will be in the general section logs so this is a log analytics workspace as you might be aware if you are following my tutorials uh, for uh, previous series so it works on kql so i have prepared uh, the kql on my local computer i have uh, already formed the kql this will be uh, like threat intelligence indicator is kind of a table which um, contains uh, the uh, data for it so let's uh, paste it let's uh, run here so sometimes from my experience i have seen it takes around five minutes because currently if you see no results found in last 24 hours please give it as some time because we have just configured everything from the scratch that is as a sentinel workspace so let's uh, wait for five minutes and uh, let's uh, give it a try once again so till we wait five minutes there is one important thing if i expand this so we have the threat intelligence indicator like as mentioned this is a, a kind of a table here which we are uh, kind of querying the data and there's a watch list so a uh, watch list if you uh, remember like we have created uh, the watch list so this is uh, uh, what it it is and uh, uh, like there there will be like uh, uh, um, similar tables on your uh, if you practice the hands on especially this threat intelligence indicator so let's wait for a while till our uh, query or uh, it gets warmed up let's open new workspace and uh, make the query available and let me explain you this thing as well uh, so since this is a table name and this this will uh, query the field especially network ip so once uh, th this is kind of like treated as a select star uh, whenever we are running so i'm still running uh, maybe uh, it's still not uh, five minutes but yeah we, we are getting the uh, starting to see the results uh, this if you look will coincide with uh, what's there in the data that is the watch list we have created like this one dmz gateway now uh, let's uh, fire the main select star command that is this um, threat intelligence uh, indicator if it gets populated yeah yeah it's getting giving uh, started giving us the value if you look right expiration date and uh, everything indicator id we we are having uh, started to see the data that is threat type is unknown currently right a network ip address if you look so that's what the query i was running uh, that is um, the aware network ip it will display the data and type is threat intelligence indicator as uh, mentioned so we are uh, uh, getting uh, the uh, now the output started to give us uh, if we look we have uh, many things here if you look this will help you right so there, there is also a chart button because we don't have much data it won't populate for this tutorial but yeah uh, if if uh, you're working on any kind of real life real time projects uh, for any it companies we'll be able to see those as well yeah so now uh, we are able to filter uh, by IP, IR network ip right this is the uh, uh, whatever we need so you can form your query depending upon what you need so i have formed a given one example to you now uh, let's cover one more important concept that is the retention retention is under settings let's click here settings it says uh, won't saved now we need to go to the workspace settings next under settings blade we have the uh, tables here 
so here uh, everything will be uh, listed out if you look there are tons of things we are more interested in the security event so here if you look we have the uh, retention uh, total retention by default everything is 30 days security incident security event so let's uh, modify these values how uh, what we if you want to change the retention by default the workspace is 30 days will be clicking here manage table here now if you look uh, there, there is like a 30 is default we can increase it to 90 days 120 days whatever but please note it will increase the cost if you read this line selecting a longer retention will incur additional charges please keep this in mind so i'll just uh, change it to 60 for now right and um, like you'll be having this data total retention period right uh, we need to click on uh, save in order to reflect these values all right if we look here now for security event we have changed the uh, retention total retention number of days that is it's now 60 days right everything uh, by default is 30 if you look here right so this concludes the basics of azure sentinel though there are more to it but to begin with something this is the uh, basics which i haven't found anywhere so i thought of sharing my knowledge to you so thank you so much for watching this video and please keep supporting by sharing this video as well with your connections all right this is fairly easy question because just by looking at the keyword we can arrive at the correct answer so whenever you see keywords or synonyms related to automating automate this kind of things then playbook should strike on your mind since we know playbooks can automate repetitive task as well right hence we'll keep option b and reject the rest and lock it as the correct answer all right let's bring the heat to the snow we got to read this requirement and arrive at the correct answer on the basis of this requirement so let's uh, look at option a c and d that is azure event hub azure synapse analytics and data factory these three if you look uh, cannot query logs using custom query language also known as kql therefore we'll eliminate these three options straight away and lock option b as the correct answer that is log analytics workspace all righty we have done the hands-on for this in previous part of this series for scenario like this let's look at option a first a says a user modifies over 60 percent of the records in a critical table updating a record or modifying the records in a table is not a threat first of all because it's a common database operation therefore it doesn't trigger any kind of like threat detection so it is incorrect choice now let's move to option b if we read uh, the uh, this words that is marked here user attempts to sign in attempts to sign in means that it indicates some kind of unauthorized access this action is suspicious because it suggests an attempt to execute arbitrary sql queries such as SQL injection attacks. We'll park this option aside. Don't just pass your certification, instead pass with flying colors with my keyword tricks included in the PDF exclusively for diamond members and above. Become a member now by clicking the join button to unlock this perk. Then please connect and inbox me on LinkedIn at the rate of Cloud Guru Amit or Instagram at the rate of Amit Physique for the PDF access. Let's look at option C. C says a user is granted the db owner database role adding a user to the uh, db owner role is a legitimate administrative action once again and doesn't indicate any kind of threat hence this is again incorrect now let's move to option d d says a user removes more than 75 records from the same table deleting records or removing records in a table is a again common database operation and not a threat of any kind so we'll eliminate this as well we are left out with option B and it is the correct answer. Oh, okay, this is about certificates this time. We'll look at option A and C first. If you look at option A and C, both uses managed identities if we look, right? And we know managed identities are used for authentication and authorization, but they cannot make certificates accessible to an app code therefore a and c are out now let's move to option d d c is use tls or ssl binding for cloud web app so configuring tls or ssl is essential for securing communication 
but it has uh, nothing to do with like uh, making certificates accessible to an app code once again as required by the question so d is out we are left out with option b that is by uh, adding app settings to the cloud web app configuration and it is the correct answer all right all right this is all about storage this time in collaboration with some kind of security that is a back right Ac attribute b is access control let's first look at option e ac is blob index tags only attribute based access control a back uh, considers both blob index tags and container names not just tags alone therefore incorrect choice now let's move to option C. C says container names and file extensions. File extensions, if you look, are not directly associated or used in attribute based access control known as a back. Therefore, due to file extension, option C is out. We are left out with B and D. It cannot be none of the above because option B, container names and blob index tags, looks good to us. So let's reject option D. We are left out with option B, container names and blog index tags. And it is the correct answer. If you want a PDF version of this course, please enroll in Diamond Membership or above. Then inbox me and connect on LinkedIn at the rate of Cloud Guru Amit or Instagram at the rate of Amit Physic. I'll be glad to help you out with the PDF access. So please, please, please don't go away. Let's meet in next part of the series.